with short tail mobility, this is actually um, the, the, the official, I guess, or the technical term is fixed mobile convergence. So from an arch architectural standpoint, you're going to need a short tail mobility router. And that mobility router can either be an appliance um, or it can be virtualized. Um, we're, we're a fan of virtualization. It gives you more flexibility. But it's essentially it's a device that sits on your network. And you can mix and match these as well. So this is just a very busy slide which refreshes us on the wonderful short tail architecture where I have um, on the left side of this diagram, you'll see I have a primary and a backup mobility router. Um, so essentially, my mobility router sits on my local area network and there's firewall programming and things that have to happen. But essentially, I'm taking my extension, my communicator application, and I'm putting it on my smart device, my iPhone uh, or my Android. When I'm in the building, I'm a Wi-Fi uh, SIP phone with all my short tail functionality as far as hold, transfer, instant messaging, presence, all of that. What's great about short tail mobility is when I leave and I'm outside of my firewall, and there's another slide on this in a little bit, it, it allows me to connect, again, via, say, a Wi-Fi connection at a hotel back through the public internet, through my firewall securely, and again, I'm just another four or five digit extension away from any user with my instant messaging and my, and my presence and everything else. You can see on the right-hand side, you can see the various devices that we can load mobility on. Um, you can see, in, you can see uh, the iPad, you can see Android, you can see the iPhone, and you can also um, load the short tail mobility platform using the iPad on what's called a short tail dock. Reiterating what I just talked about, um, some of the various devices that you can put short tail mobility's platform uh, application on. But some of the basic unified communication features are available, such as extension dialing, four-digit extension dialing, transfer, hold. Um, when you put somebody on hold, they'll hear your corporate music on hold. Um, video, point-to-point uh, -point video conferencing between mobile devices or mobile devices and desktop users. Um, things like do not disturb, call handling modes, remote extension assignment, all that's available right at your fingertips from your mobile device. Um, and again, we can run voice over IP over a Wi-Fi connection. Um, we can also run it over data plans like 3G, 4G, although not, although advertised and can handle it. Um, we have seen some issues when you're roaming on your data plans between um, various cell spots. Wi-Fi, it works really well. Obviously, anytime you're putting voice over the public internet, there are caveats to that when it comes to voice quality. I just threw this up as a, as a separate slide because now short tail mobility is available on the iWatch, which is, which I think there's a few of the employees in our company that are using this and really like it. Yeah, I, I have I have one of them, and I can see if somebody sends me an instant message, and I have my mobility app open on my phone, it'll pop up the instant messaging on my on my watch. I can click on it, I can voice talk back to it, or I can actually you know click the message. I can call that person back. I you know I can look at the. Uh, the different things I have coming up, it accesses my calendar, so it'll show me meetings that I have that I have coming up, and I can actually, you know, if I miss a call from somebody, I can call them back and initiate my phone to call that person back from the all from the uh, the Apple Watch app, which is kind of nice. Thanks, Chris. Um, just to highlight some of the various features that are available with short-term mobility, you have the single device, dual persona. So if I'm making outbound calls that's to a personal contact, it'll outbound, outpulse my personal cell phone caller ID. Um, incoming calls will route to my cellular voicemail with my personal greeting. It can recognize business contacts, so outgoing calls then outpulses my work, my desk DID, and then incoming calls goes to my work voicemail, um, which is pretty nice. The calendar integration is nice. This is really the same day calendar integration. So you can pull up your calendar and if you have a, uh, a conference call set up using GoToMeeting um, or using the short tail service appliance, the short tail back end conferencing solution, you can just click join and basically it will call the bridge, enter the, the, uh, the ID of the, the meeting number and get you directly into the conference without having to press a lot of buttons, which is a pain, as we all know, when you're trying to join a, a conference call on your mobile. So this is a really nice feature, and I use this literally every single day. Huge time saver. 
one-to-one -one video. This, I elaborated on this a, a little bit ago, basically um, using Shortel, some of Shortel's somewhat basic video capabilities. You can do point-to-point -point video between uh, a smart device and a tablet, between smart devices running Shortel Mobility, um, or uh, a user that's running Shortel Communicator and uh, a smart device. So a nice uh, Fourier into the point-to-point -point video world using this application. I talked about this a little bit ago. This is the Mobility Dock. This is a device that does not have an Ethernet cable attached to it. Basically, you plug it in and you dock your, your iPhone or your smart device or your Android. Actually, no, no Android, just I, uh, currently just um, iPhone and iPad. But this is nice because you basically take your extension with you, and this is kind of what we see the future of telephony. Uh, where I have my smart device, I have all my applications, my UC client, everything. But then when I sit down at a desk, I have the ergonomic capabilities of plugging in my iPhone or my iPad, plugging a headset, and not having to, to be limited to the capabilities of the device itself. And so with the dock, you have your dial pad, you have uh, speakerphone, headset jack, things like that. And Chris, jump in any time, by the way, if there's anything that you think should be brought up that I might be missing. Yeah, and the mobility dock is, is interesting. Shortel deploys mobility docks to a lot of their remote employees. Instead of giving them Shortel phones, they simply, you know, they already have an iPhone um, from the company, so they give them a mobility dock. So that way, when they're out and about, they have their phone, but when they get back, they don't have a Shortel phone. They just dock their iPhone into their mobility dock, and they take all their calls and everything like that, and that's their whole wor mobile workstation is they get a, a laptop, a cell phone, and a mobility dock, and... You know, they're able to take all their calls, use headsets and stuff like that. And even some of Shortel's engineering team that's, you know, out, you know, working remotely, not from their locations, they take all of their calls over mobility. Thanks, Chris. But basically, a lot of the, the uh, presence and instant messaging is built in. So you can see the green, uh, the, the picture on the left-hand side, you'll see that Andy Android, uh, he's available, but he's also on the road. Um, you see the little icon of the road next to it. Bobby Blackberry or Bob Blackberry is also available, but looks like he's at the corporate office. Um, you have others that are not available or um, or perhaps busy. Um, then you can drill in and and to someone that um, you want to call or video or instant message with. So um, so really nice the ability to and we use our communicator like this quite a bit because we're distributed across multiple offices. The ability to quickly see if someone's available to take a call and then select them and then pick the mode of communication, whether it's messaging or, or calling or video. Um, the back end that drives this is either the Shortel conferencing bridge, the service appliance, um, and we have some customers that are using a back end um, Microsoft, I should say, link or Skype for business now. And there's some caveats around that. So um, there's, a, there's a couple of different architectural options with this. And this is nice, just the basic stuff that we've all come to know and love with Shortel Communicator. Remote extension assignment, reassigning my extension, um, setting my call handling mode, changing my visual voicemail, um, or, or, or accessing my visual voicemail. Um, all that can be done from the mobility client. So the features that we've been using for years with Shortel Communicator that we really like um, is now just available with the touch of a button. And so if I'm leaving, for example, and I forget to, I want to reassign my extension to my cell phone and I forgot to do it or put myself into extended absence because I'm going on vacation or whatever the case might be, I simply just do it right from my mobility application. If someone leaves me a message at work, um, I can also use my mobility application and use visual voicemail, which we really like, which is kind of a step up, obviously, from a simple way, uh, way file based message in my inbox. And from here, I can play uh, messages, I can call back, et cetera. But the voicemail at this point is still stored back on your your uh, your Shortel system. Without getting too technical on this slide, um, one of the nice things that I love about mobility is obviously it has the built-in security. Um, but I don't, if say I'm on a Wi-Fi connection across the world in Singapore, and I'm on a Wi-Fi connection, I basically just open up my mobility client and start using it. There's no separate VPN connection to set up. There's no, there's, there's nothing the user really has to do. They use their mobility client like they always do, um, and it's using. Um, industry-based standard security protocols, um, certificate-based authentication, um, fully encrypted. So the system recognizes that you're outside your firewall, and it and it invokes the the security protocols. Whereas that 
definitely might be different if you're into inside on a Wi-Fi connection. So, and it works really well. Um, optimized for wireless and voice. So, um, audio engineered for lossy networks. So, an example, uh, I actually had one of these webinars last month. I was in Central Oregon. I was on a, I was in a hotel on a Wi-Fi, um, and I didn't want to join one of these 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 webinars using my cell phone. I didn't want users to hear that tinny sort of cell phone audio quality. So I used mobile, my mobility client and using some of the underlining under the hood sort of technologies with the codecs and such, it's, it's more robust over lossy connections, um, which is really nice. So we, we've seen that users that, that use the mobility application, we have some users that do use, use it over a 4G data plan. I think Chris was uh, on a call with um, a sales manager customer of ours who was in an airport in Singapore at the airport on the uh, airport Wi-Fi network and had a an hour-long call with that person so it's it's definitely built to be a mobile uh, road warrior sort of application um, short term mobility just as a side note is is a uh, was a product that short brought on through an acquisition a few years ago by a company called Digito and they've made a tremendous enhancements to the product. At first it was fairly buggy and it's had some issues, but now we're seeing a much higher adoption rate with our customers, including our own employees internally. We use it quite a bit. So um, it's definitely a viable application these days and people use it. And it, there's a lot of use case business scenarios where it makes sense, even specifically around cost savings. So if we have customers that are doing any sort of international traveling and using international plans, Short-term mobility can there's a, there's a pretty fast ROI on that stuff. It's also a good uh, solution when you're when you're talking about setting up disaster recovery and business continuity. You know we have a lot of customers that will centralize this sort of architecture in a data center, put redundant dial tone or SIP trunks with dial tone failover, and put the HQ server in the data center. And there's a lot of different design options with Shortel where we can we can really address the disaster recovery and business continuity. You know n plus one switches, which by the way, and I always this isn't on a slide. With 14.2, you can virtualize uh, a Shortel N plus one switch, which is a spare switch, at no cost. You just need VM if you if you already have a VMware environment. So there's a there's a way you can replicate or duplicate or enhance the, the call processing redundancy of your Shortel infrastructure just by adding an N plus one switch that's a, a virtual spare at no cost. So um, sometimes our customers are surprised to hear this, so we like to just make sure they understand that. 